who is using Instagram at the moment? As you can see from the graph, uh, it's massively popular. The growth has been enormous. And right now there are over 800 million users. Um, that's an awful lot of people who've been using it. Part of the growth, I think, has been stimulated by the use of stories, which um, basically was a direct ripoff of a Snapchat, um, uh, the Snapchat stories. So uh, we've got 800, more than 800 million users. And these are the types of people who are using it. So we've got the demographics here. Um, what you can see from that chart, I'm hoping you can see it, is they are predominantly younger. Younger people are on Instagram. And we seem to have a fairly even mix of um, male and female users. Uh, this is sort of worldwide breakdown of the demographics. So you need to think not only about who's using it, how old they are, and perhaps how much Instagram is used in your country, but also why they're using it. What are they on Instagram for? Now, Instagram is, is usually uh, a place for inspiration, um, escapism, aspiration. So it's not somewhere that you just kind of throw your content up onto it because that's never going to work. Um, I'm just going to talk through some of the basics of it. And hopefully, uh, if you've got any questions, I am looking at my uh, phone. And Hosam, I did see the message to say the audio is fine and you can see the slides. That's fantastic. At least we can see something. So basically on Instagram, you've got two types of accounts. You've got a personal account or a business account. And you can actually switch between the two. The one thing with the business account is that you can see the analytics. So you can see how many people are looking at your stuff. So uh, it's definitely worth having a business account. And when you actually have one of those, the um, profiles are a bit different. So make sure you fill it in correctly. Um, only the verified accounts can actually uh, be sharing links and do that swipe up for more in stories. But I'll come back to that later. So what you've got is the feed. The feed is basically the, the thing that you land on when you see somebody's account. And this is the sort of curated collection of photos um, or video. And it's kind of a perfect, a permanent record. You curate it and it looks amazing. Um, so that can have a particular look to it, a theme. You want When you land on it, it needs to have a style, a niche, something that you can, um, uh, you know, just it, it's obvious what you're going to be sharing. And it needs to be consistent. If it looks terrible, people are not going to want to follow you. So you've got to make it look good. So that's the feed. So you've got the individual pictures on it. You've got what's called a carousel of photos and you've got the video. Um, the stories are the bits at the top. Um, and I'll show you in a second. You'll, you will come into this, this piece here in a minute. So I'll show you where they are and what they are. But stories are the, the rip off from Snapchat. So they last for 24 hours. They're much more personal, more intimate, more fleeting, more fun very relaxed. It's not kind of curated particularly. You can make it look amazing. You can curate the content using all sorts of different other content curation apps and then upload it into your stories. You don't actually just have to create the story in the um, story format itself. Um, then obviously there's live. The one thing that we have got uh, in Instagram now is an algorithm and that is in my view a complete pain because what you have with that is you've got content that um, basically Facebook, because they own Instagram, think that you want to see. So they will show you content that's not new. It's also interspersed with thousands of adverts. Uh, so I think the algorithm, uh, some people are sort of fiddling with it. There are tricks and tips to trying to get the algorithm to work for you. And if you want to find out more about that, you could try Googling Instagram pods, P-O-D-S, and see how people are trying to game it and make it work for them. But I think if you've had interaction on your Instagram account, um, you know, quite speedily, then the algorithm thinks, oh, people like this. So Facebook is now uh, prioritizing stuff that, in, you know, has more comments and more um, discussion going on in it. So maybe Instagram does the same thing. So comments and stuff is good for you. This is what your homepage will look like. I'm going to just run through all these things. So you've got the home little button on the left at the bottom, the search um, you know, magnifying glass, how to add a photo. This is where you see who's liked your stuff and what the people you follow are liking. And here's where you'd find your profile. Across the top here, this, this little arrow, that means um, the direct messaging. So you can private message people on there. These are stories across the top. This one here is a story that was live. Um, and so that's the Vogue one. When they have a red ring around them, it means they're new. 
uh, once you've viewed the story, then they're going to be, um, you know, the, the ring will disappear. So this is your uh, home timeline. If you want to search for something, one of the things with Instagram is um, you will only get found really by using hashtags correctly um, and obviously by your username. You can't actually just search for ordinary keywords in the comment and the, the caption. So if you put into that, you go into the magnifying glass and you put in a search for something like Twitter, you get the top. So this could be obviously a place, a hashtag or a person with the word London in their name. If you then click, I'm just going to go through these bits here. I'm going to go through from top to people to tags to place. So in top, this, I've now moved into people. We've got um, the uh, Instagram, people with the name London in their Instagram um, username. Sorry, I'm trying to look at questions that might be coming up now. Um, uh, so th the other thing then is to go into the hashtags. Hashtags are really an art on Instagram, and I will be talking much more about that in a second. So what you've got here is you've got um, obvious kind of hashtags. So it's guessing London, London Bridge, London Eye, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, a hashtag like London will be really, really noisy. Millions and millions of people will be using a generic hashtag like that. Um, uh, and then you've got specific places in London. So we'll, we'll go through this in a second. But so you can see there's lots of different ways of searching for something. You can search for things that Instagram think you might be looking for. You can search for people with the name London in their username. You can search for tags that have got uh, London or London Eye or wherever it is. And then you can search for places. The thing that's really important, this for journalists, is um, using hashtags in a breaking news situation and learning how to search them. So uh, if you tag something, so this was a uh, fire in a, a tower block, um, and the, the torch, the marina torch. Um, so if you search for a hashtag like that, uh, all these oops, sorry, all these kind of things will come up. So it's incredibly important when you're using Instagram, if you want to get your stuff discovered, you learn how to use the hashtags properly and you tag in your stories the location of where you are. Because what Instagram then does is it goes through and it sort of pulls together all the, so for example, anybody who would have tagged themselves in the Marina Torch here, they pull together the latest lives using a particular hashtag. Um, and so it's one way of getting discovered and they might take individual clips from people who are going live at the time, um, I mean sharing stuff at the time. So hashtags are really important. And what you need to do when you're looking for something in a breaking news situation is you, you've got to kind of think what hashtag like on Twitter what hashtag would somebody use in a breaking news situation? This is that uh, awful, uh, the London Bridge attacks. I mean, absolutely horrific. And what's really strange here, this was the, the picture that was actually used by all sorts of people, but this was the terrorists who'd been um, shot once they'd gone around on their killing spree. Um, you wouldn't think automatically necessarily to look at some of these hashtags. You might look at London. Um, terroristic suggests obviously to me that he wasn't English. Um, an attack. So you've got to think really carefully how you are searching for the particular tags that somebody might have put in their story or on their page. It is increasingly uh, a useful space for journalists to find content um, and I would recommend definitely that you definitely <laughs> learn how to search it properly. Um, likewise if you're using the hashtags yourself. So put yourself in the shoes of the person who's using them because they might say terroristic. I might have said, you know, London Bridge, that's an obvious thing to look at, or, uh, you know, London Bridge attack or something. So hashtags very much like um, Twitter, although they're used very differently. Interestingly, in Instagram, you can use up to 30 hashtags in a post, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> up to 30. But if you use that many in Twitter, you'd look like an absolute idiot. You should never, in Twitter, use more than two hashtags in any one place, um, any one tweet, sorry. Whereas on Instagram, as you can see, you can use loads of them, but there's an art to how you use them and where you place them. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about hashtags, and I can't see any questions coming through, but if anybody has any questions, please could you put it in the box? And then um, one of the Thompson Foundation team will send them to me on WhatsApp because I can't do a split screen on this. And if I stop sharing, the last time I stopped sharing the screen, um, it cut off the live completely. 
So people will often say, how do you or how should you use hashtags on Instagram? And how do you know which ones to use? And most of all, how can you get people involved with them? I think there's a tendency for people to just use generic ones because they're popular. So if you were doing, a, I don't know, a post about, I don't know, fashion or something, and you used hashtag fashion, that will have millions and millions of people using it. So it'll just disappear. It'll be used really quickly. It'll also attract the bots. There are an awful lot of fake accounts on Instagram. And if you use a generic hashtag, um, they're going to sort of, you might find you've got a like or a smiley face or a thumbs up or something on your content. And you think, oh, that's nice. These people are not real. They're fake. They're just bots. That kind of engagement counts for nothing. Um, uh, sorry, I've just had a question through. Why only two hashtags on Twitter? Um, hi, Alan. Uh, so only two. It just looks a bit desperate. Uh, too many tags, it also sort of litters up the screen. So if you look at a, a tweet, for example, and you've got, uh, you know, hashtags, those are hyperlinked, so they come out a different colour. In my case, they're blue. Um, and then maybe you've got a link that's blue, a username that's blue too. So it just looks like litter, and it's incredibly noisy to look at it online. So it sort of looks like you're a bit desperate hashtagging every single word. Um, so that's really bad practice. Choose the ones, you know, maybe two. Twitter started the hashtag thing um, and really on, on Twitter you shouldn't really use more than two in any one tweet and don't just go for the generic ones um, that's not necessarily the best idea so in Instagram I would recommend you have a really clear strategy a clear strategy for your use of hashtags as well which includes a bit of research spend some time thinking about who you're aiming at and what hashtags those communities are using so it might be okay to say, you know, hashtag London, if you're in London, but that doesn't help your discovery necessarily, um, or the engagement, and that is much more important. You don't necessarily just want, you know, a, a very generic hashtag and attract a bunch of bots. What you want are real people who will be engaging with you in, you know, in a real genuine way. So have a look at this, for example. This is just an example of a, a post that I just found. Um, so basically what they've got here is Visit England have put the location into the tag. So you've got to be careful with this. You can actually say you're anywhere. Don't assume because something says the North York Moors or the, you know, the site of an, an event of some sort, like the Florida shootings or whatever. Don't believe that they're there unless you can prove it. Look at what else they've been putting up there. So they've tagged that. They've got a nice picture. The picture quality is incredibly important in Instagram. Um, it's a place for beautiful pictures, so don't put rubbish pictures up there. Uh, then you have the, the caption. So the captions can be short, they can be long. If, you're, if they're longer, you need to split them up a bit with some sort of, you know, I don't know, spaces in between or dots or kind of like we, what we used to call in the old days on a typewriter, a carriage return. So just hit the return button. You can do that on your phone. Break it up because otherwise it's very intense on the eyes. Maybe use some emojis in there. If it's a longer caption, take somebody on the journey with you. Make them feel something. Make them understand what you're talking about while you're doing it. You can see here then, this is incredibly important. Photo by a person. The photo credit, do not steal people's content. Do not steal their pictures. The copyright is retained by the person who took the picture, not the person who uploaded it. And increasingly on Instagram, people are stealing content, photos, and getting in serious trouble for it. And maybe you might have to pay for it. So either get in touch with the person and say, can I use your picture? Uh, at the very, very, very least, the photo by. Don't alter it. Don't put any filters on it. Don't mess about with it. You're more likely to be in trouble if it's got a um, you know, commercial uh, side to it. Quite a lot of people then would put in maybe three or four hashtags at the end. But in the comment, they either will then put some dot, dot, dots in that and split it up and put a, a bunch more. Or in a separate comment underneath, they will cut and paste a bunch of others. With these, you can see there's a locator. So it says where it is. But there's also the ones that the communities will be using. So there's probably a community that use, I don't know, Capturing Britain or Explore England. Do your research to find out where the genuine engagement is happening and the people you're trying to reach. 
Um, and this does take time, but it's very easy if you did it with a team or you made a spreadsheet of hashtags. And you will see what I mean if you actually start researching it. So look at somebody who knows what they're talking about. Look at what they use. Open that hashtag and have a look around and see who's using it. Sometimes, you know, if you had a generic hashtag like fashion, you'll find absolutely horrific, rubbishy bodybuilders and fitness people and, you know, all sorts of fake accounts will be using it. You don't want to be associated with that. You want to be associated with a quality um, community and quality content and engagement. So uh, have a look around at the hashtags here. You can also now follow hashtags. That's a new thing on Instagram. The thing with that is if you followed a hashtag like London, that would be horrific because you'd be inundated with pictures of London. Your timeline would become utterly unmanageable and a waste of space. It's far better if you are monitoring quality specific small community hashtags or even your own hashtag and you can curate co you know content ask people to share their pictures and use your hashtag um, that you can then feature so for gathering UGC content to feature on your account that's exactly uh, what you should be doing so you could say so for example my ultra social account is where I share best practice and I have a hashtag that I use called this is ultra social if I think it is and then if people go and look for this is ultra social which you may well wish to do have a look at that and it's where I share best practice so I'll be doing this more frequently from now on it was a bit sporadic before but um, my ultra social account is simply for when I'm doing training and I can show people um, you know, best practice. Sorry about the barking outside. If you can hear that, it's my neighbour's dog. Um, okay, so hashtags are very important for discovery and for you finding content and for getting quality engagement and for breaking into, you know, communities who are using it. So, you know, I'd recommend that you have a really good think about it. Some people will stick a pile of hashtags, you know, in the, co the caption. Others will put it as the first comment afterwards. But it's a good thing to have, a, you know, a few uh with the caption itself my personal preference is to add it as a comment underneath when you've got a sack load of them like that because otherwise it looks really messy don't just keep cutting and pasting all the time change them according to the content and the people you're trying to aim at that's really important you need a strategy when you're using instagram instagram stories um as, as i keep saying was not an original idea for instagram but it was a really good one that snapchat had and instagram pretty much stole it absolutely just like that it has been a very very successful it's easier to use than snapchat and brands are getting all over it you can tell amazing things uh, the stories only last for 24 hours but now another new feature which is also really good is that you can take clips from each of the stories and you can highlight them at the top of your profile i haven't got an example of that in here but um in this deck because i had to rush and put this together this morning but um, you'll see what I mean. You'll see the sort of highlight ones, which is a really good way of, you know, saying this is the kind of stuff I do. So on my ultra social account, I've only got one, which will be apps, but I will add to it when I add more apps. To open stories, this is the um, the thing that Instagram came up with, which I thought was rather sweet. You see the little camera when you're on your home page here. So that's the home. When you're on your home page, click on the camera, or you swipe right, and it will open up. And what you get then are along the bottom of it. Uh, there are different things that you can do in stories. So type is new and I'll show you this is what it looks like. There are different type modes. So here you see type live, blah, blah, blah. You can do it in different styles, um, different typefaces, different colors, blah, blah, blah. It's really quite nice. Um, so having something like that's good fun. Live is obvious. That's for going live. The normal camera is where you might take a picture and then you can put in um, the text and you can put in hashtags and you can put in emojis uh, all sorts of stuff all the artwork that you might want a boomerang boomerangs are incredibly popular frankly i'm getting a little bit bored with them but you know people love them so it's the you know short piece of video that goes backwards and forwards super zoom is what it says on the tin you just have a zoom that goes in and they're quite <laughs> they're quite funny i quite enjoy them rewind is literally rewind it's great for things like if you were pouring a cup of tea the water can go back up into the teapot um so you know if you want something to go backwards and forwards that's good fun hands free well that says what it does on the tin as well and stop motion is a new one if you wanted to make a well relatively new a stop motion animation um so that again there's also an app called stop motion if you wanted to create stop motion videos so what you could do with all your um the content that you're creating I personally 
Oh, I'll come back to that one. I personally recommend that, um, you know, you can, you can upload the pictures as you go along, or you can make the content, save it to your camera roll, and then go bang, 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 and upload, upload all the things all in one. So your, your story goes up as a whole story, a complete story. The great thing um, with your stories, the really great thing, is that you can see who's seen them. And now I think Instagram is introducing a thing where they will show you who has screen grabbed elements of your story. So stalkers, beware, your, your time is up. But um, so you can see who's looked at it. And what you will find is people looking at your stories that you didn't even know perhaps were following you. Or um, you'll also see that which bits of the story they've seen. So the little eyeball image, the eye image will move. So maybe they didn't bother to get to the end of your story. So that'll tell you whether your content is boring them or not, or they just kind of scrolled off somewhere. So it's really good to see, do they complete the stories? Who are these people? So don't forget, they might not now be seeing the stuff you've got in your grid because of this ridiculous algorithm. <laughs> sorry but I think it's ridiculous I would far rather they introduce something like Facebook have got where you've got the most recent option as opposed to the idiot top stories option um, so putting that you know the most recent would be a really good idea um, there's so much I can talk about and I'm going to be running out of time shortly uh, any questions I haven't had any other questions uh, if anybody wanted to ask me anything please do this is your time if you think, oh gosh, I didn't think of a question, or you're watching this on the replay, you can see my username, at Sue Llewellyn, with lots of L's in it, loads and loads of L's. So at Sue Llewellyn, you'll find me on Instagram or on Twitter. So tweet me a question uh, if you've got any, and I will answer them. Um, what have I got next? If you have a verified account, you can, um, when you're making your stories, you get this swipe up for more option, which is a way of driving traffic to your website, which is brilliant. It is a real shame that um, unverified accounts can't do this because you can't really share links. What you find in Instagram, unless you've got over 10,000 followers, what you find in Instagram is people will put link in bio and then in the grid with the picture, they will say, see, you know, my recipe or something, link in bio, and then they change that every day. So. But it would be very nice if there was an option to be able to share links rather than just swipe up. If you tag people in um, the, the story um, or you put the, the location in, they will be notified and the location you might get your content found in the explore section. These bits here that you see at the top, you see the dash, 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 you know, or this one has lots. This is how many clips there are in the story. Some people you will see have, you know, loads. And I'd really like to know how many people actually get to the end if you've got, say, 12 clips. But um, so don't have too many. So don't forget to tag people, but only if it's relevant. It will really annoy them if you tag them and it's not relevant. So don't just go around tagging people to try and attract their attention because they'll not be you won't be very popular. Um, so I've already said that the saving the content. One thing I must say, never, 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 never think it's a good idea to buy followers. Uh, either on Twitter or on Instagram. Um, and don't assume that if you've just got people doing a thumbs up or a smiley emoji or great content, uh, that they're real. They're not real. Um, how do you pin your stories in categories along the top of the account? Ah, well, I could show you, but I can't show you because I get cut off. Um, in your story, there's a thing saying highlight. And if you press the highlight button on one of the images in the story, that will go into the highlights box above your account so I hope that makes sense um, Deborah if if you have a look at when you've got a story put it put something up on a story and then go in and it, it'll have a highlight option that is then how you can tag it into the top of your story have you got any more um, questions because I'm going to wrap up in a second um, in a minute or two uh, so yeah never buy fake followers um, I found somebody recently who had been buying loads of fake followers and it's just such a bad idea. Also, don't do the auto, you know, the auto posting of anything. Don't sort of auto follow people or auto like stuff. Um, there are some apps that, that do that and that's a really bad idea. Um, what Instagram is all about is building communities and being genuine with people. And you don't just put your content up there and talk about yourself all the time. You Put your content up there that you think people will like and, and that says something. You say something interesting and you have to go out and engage with other people. You've got to like their stuff. You've got to comment or they won't see. 